Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I will show you how to use the container element in Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. The container element is a foundational element in Avada, and along with the column element, forms the structural backbones of pages built in the Avada Builder. Columns are also incredibly versatile and can have a large range of background effects and any manner of interior content. The container element, as the name suggests, is a holding element. A container holds columns, which then holds elements. So a container element is always the first thing to be added to a page. Let's look at a blank page on the Avada Food pre-built here to see how this works. Note how on the starter page, there is no option to add columns or elements without first adding a container. As it says right here on the page, the building process always starts with a container, then columns, then elements. So when I click on the Add Container button, the dialog that appears allows us to not only add a container element, but also a range of container and column combinations. We can just add an empty container, and this would be useful for example if we wanted to drag other columns into a container to separate them from other content, but usually we add a column element at the same time as we add a container. We can also add containers that have been saved in the library by going to the Library Containers tab at the top. I'll just add a container I've saved in the library here, and we can see a typical example of the container at work. Here it's basically just an invisible container holding two columns and the various elements within. But a container can be so much more if you need it to be. Let's delete that and start again. So now I'll just add a container with a single full width column. And here we can see the element controls for the container on the right and the column on the left. In the middle is the Add Element button, which only appears when there is a column in the layout. Looking at the container controls, we can see two icons, the Container Options icon and the Add Containers icon. When we mouse over the icons, we can see the full range of control icons. We can clone, save, delete or drag containers just like we can columns and other elements. To add further containers to the page, we would simply click on the Add Containers icon, and the previously shown Select Container window opens again, allowing us to choose from our range of empty and populated containers. The new container is then added directly below. You can add your entire page content inside one container if you wish, but containers can be used in many versatile ways, and you will get the most flexibility with your layout by placing each section of content in its own container. In that way you can name your containers to keep order over your content, and some containers might have background images or colours, while others might have their internal content stretching full width etc. Let's look quickly at how page templates can affect containers. Right now this is the default 100% width page template, and as you can see the container is full width, while the column remains at site width. If you want the container to be also site width, you would need to change the page template to site width. I'll just quickly go to the Page Options panel, and in the Setting tab, this is where I would change the page to use the Site Width template. Personally, I find the 100% Width template to be the most useful. With this template, you can add borders, background colours, gradients, images or videos to the container that will spread the full width of the page, while any content inside the container is at least by default Site Width. Ok, so let's edit the container, and let's look at the options on the General tab. The first option is called Interior Content Width. The default setting for this option is Site Width, but if you set it to 100% Width, the interior content will also stretch the full width of the screen, minus any side padding on the container. The next option is Height, which offers you three choices, Auto, Full Height and Maximum Height. Auto is the default, and with this option the container will basically just grow or shrink with the content. If you activate Full Height, the container will be fixed to 100% of the height of the viewport. This can be used in many ways, and perhaps works best with the 100% width template, but this is a useful option for any time you want your container content to fill the viewport height of the browser. Let's have a look at an example of this here on the craft beer demo. Here you can see the first container on this page is set to full height, which you can see in the builder by the dotted lines. If we have the full height option enabled, we also get a new option called Enable 100% Scroll. This is otherwise known as Full Screen Scrolling Sections. With this option, you can add the container to a collection of 100% height containers that share scrolling navigation. This can best be seen on the Avada Crypto or Adventure pre-builds. 
For more information on this feature, please follow the links under the video. The last option is minimum height, and if you select this, it then offers you another option to specify a minimum height for the container, even when it is empty. When enough content is added to fill the container, it grows as normal. Then comes the Flexbox alignment and justification options. For a run through on all the possible ways to use the Flex features, see the Flexbox for containers and columns documentation, linked under the video. But if we just quickly look at an example page here, we can see that this container is set to full height and that we have multiple rows. Row alignment is the first of these flex options, but this only shows if you have minimum height or full height chosen in the height option. This option allows you to choose how rows are aligned vertically in the container. You really need to have multiple rows in the container to take full advantage of this option. And so here I can choose to align them to stretch, flex start, center, flex end, space between, space around, or space evenly. The next option is column alignment. With this option, you can select how you want columns to align within rows. By default, they are aligned to flex start, the top of the container, less any container padding, of course. But with this option, I can change the alignment to center, flex end, or I can choose stretch, which makes them all the same height and fills the available space. Then there is column justification. This allows you to control how the columns will be justified horizontally. This option won't work with content that fills 100% of the container width, as in that situation, there is no space to align anything horizontally. But if I delete one of these columns here, we can see how we can align the columns to flex start, center, flex end, or with space between, space around, or the last option, space evenly. Another simple example of how this might be used is with a single column that's not full width, but centered on the page. So if I align them to the start and delete another column, this is how a container would be by default. But if I select centered column justification, we can see our one third column now aligns itself to the center of the container without any other columns in the row. Okay, let's continue with the options. The next one is content wrap. As the description says, this controls whether flex items wrap onto multiple rows or are forced onto one row. So by default, if you have a number of columns that equal more than 100%, then the last column goes into its own row. If you want to make sure content does not fall to a second row, then you would use no wrap, likely in combination with the flex shrink option on the column level. After this comes column spacing. Here you can set a default amount of column spacing, and this affects all columns in the container. This can then be overridden on a column by column basis. The next option is container HTML tag. This enables you to choose the HTML tag the container will have. The default is div, but you can change this to section, header, footer, main, article, aside, or nav. The next option is the name of menu anchor. This is used to add a CSS ID, which is especially useful when using a one-page menu. Please see the documentation on anchor scrolling for more information on this. The next option is the container visibility option. Here you can hide or show the container on certain screen sizes, which allows you to make, for example, mobile only containers and turn them off for larger screen sizes. Below this is the container publishing status. Read more about this in the container element documentation linked below, but basically you can choose for the container to be published, published until, published after, or a draft. If you choose published until or published after, a date selector will appear. The draft option for the container will simply hide it on a published page until you change its status back to published. Okay, the two final element options here are the CSS class and CSS ID, which can be used to further customize your containers with CSS. Let's go to the about page and look further at the design tab. I'll just scroll down and edit this our achievements container. And as we can see, this tab starts off with margin and padding options. These are extremely useful and can be used in many ways for layout separation. As we can see here, there has been 6% padding set on the top and bottom of this container. See the documentation on how to control spacing in Nevada for more information on this. Note here that the first two options have responsive option icons. Basically what these do is allow us to set individual values for different screen sizes for these specific options. There are more of these options available in columns, but here in containers they are available in margins and padding, content wrap, background color, and background image. 
I can change the various screen sizes either from the responsive options icon or from the responsive tab on the toolbar up here. And then we could set values in the padding or margins that would just apply when this site was being viewed at that specific screen size. So now, for example, if I just change the top and bottom padding of this container to be 5%, we can see it has applied that for this layout, but if we return to desktop, the previous values still apply. Please see the responsive option sets documentation for much more information on this awesome feature. As well as typing in values into the element options, you can also use these on-screen drag handles to adjust both padding and margins. Again, please see the documentation and videos listed below for more information on margins and padding. But in short, the blue controls adjust the padding of the container, and the purple ones control the margins. You can drag both the blue handles on the screen down to add padding to both the top and bottom of the container, or alternatively you can add them directly into the options panel. After this comes the container link color. This controls both the link color and the link hover color for this specific container. They're both pulling the defaults here, but this is handy if you want to have different color links on certain containers. And then there is the container border size. With this you can set individually sized borders all around the container. And if you add a value here, you can also choose the color and style for them as well. The border radius options here allow you to set the border radius for each specific corner of the container. The next option is box shadow. This allows you to apply a box shadow around the container. I'll just move over to the places page as there's a good candidate for a box shadow there. We can see by the color that this is a global container and any changes I make to it will apply to any instances used on any other pages. I will just edit the container and head to the design tab and set box shadow to yes. As soon as I do this, I get five new options directly under it to customize it. I'll set the box shadow position to zero pixels and zero pixels. This will create an even shadow all around the container. As the description says, positive values put the shadow below and to the right of the box, while negative values put it above and to the left of the box. I'll set both the blur radius and spread radius to 10 and set a box shadow color here. I'll leave the style on outer and if I just go to preview, we can see how it gives the container a more dimensional look. For more information on the box shadow options, see the linked video. Okay, moving on, the last two options are Z index and overflow, which are both advanced CSS properties, useful for more advanced users. The Z index option is a positioning value for the container, and this can be negative or positive. This specifies the stack order of containers, so a higher Z index means that the container will be in front of those with a lower Z index. Follow the how to use Z index in Avada link for more information on that option. And the overflow option allows you to specify what should happen if the content overflows the container's box. It will work when a specified height is set to the container. You can choose from default, visible, scroll, hidden, or auto. Okay, so now let's go to the background tab. In many instances, containers will just be invisible holders for columns and other elements. But there is much more you can do with containers if you wish. Here it becomes abundantly clear that containers do not have to be invisible. Under the background options we can see that there are seven tabs. Color, gradient, image, slider, video, pattern, and mask. So containers can have a color, either solid or with opacity, a gradient background, a background image, a slider of background images, a video background image, either self-hosted or on Vimeo or YouTube, as well as a pattern overlay and a mask. So many options here. To do justice to these amazing options, I've created a separate video on the background tab and all the possible effects. So for a full rundown, please see the how to use the container and column background options video, linked below. Okay, let's move on to the final tab, extras. The first option here is rendering logic. This allows you to add rendering logic to the container with a huge array of conditional types and possible values. For more information on this, please see the how to use rendering logic in Avada video, linked below. After this is the position absolute option. An absolutely positioned element is removed from the normal document flow, and no space is created for the element in the page layout. The element is positioned relative to its closest positioned ancestor. Also, if you enable this, you also get a responsive absolute position, so you have full control over the option for responsive design. Under this, you can find the position sticky option, which of course enables the container to be sticky. Turn this on and a whole range of new options appear, controlling the responsive sticky position, the sticky container background color, 
the sticky container offset, the sticky container transition offset, and the sticky container hide on scroll option. These can be used in a variety of ways and will be most useful perhaps in custom headers. So please see the how to work with sticky containers doc for a rundown on how to use this extremely useful and interesting feature. The container element also has the animation type options to animate the loading of the container. For more information, the element animation video is also linked below. Finally, there are the filter type options. Very basically, these options allow you to add filters to a container and its contents, and it's also found in columns. These filters are much like ones found in Photoshop or other editing programs. There are eight filters in all. Hue, Saturation, Brightness, Contrast, Invert, Sepia, Opacity and Blur. And there are options to apply these on both the normal and the hover state of the container. You can apply any or all of these filters concurrently with complete separation between normal and hover state. For a full rundown of this awesome feature, check out the how to use the container and column filter options video linked below. Okay, thanks for staying with me. Containers are the foundational structural element of the Avada Builder. And as you can see, they can either be a simple holding element for columns and elements, or extremely flexible and powerful elements in their own right, depending on your design needs. Okay, this concludes our video on how to use the container element in Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.